Good evening, guys. Uh, remember, we started last time this comprehension about King Midas and how he was offered um, a present by his guest, Silence. And we stopped at the point when the guest left and Midas was lying under a tree and thinking of what he could ask, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> what, what he could ask for. So let's start at this paragraph. This is page two, the second page. Page two, okay. Let's start on the completion of the story. Please be ready with your booklets as to take notes of what you're going to write. And anyway, I'll be sending you the booklet once we finish it with the answers and the explanation. I'm going to send it to you at the end of the sessions. So we stopped at this paragraph. Midas strolled under the tree, shaded from the brilliant sun. Suddenly he looked up at the sky. He gazed at the sun's rays and thought. He gazed means he looked closely at the sun rays. Looked closely. Okay. So he looked closely at the sun rays and thought, the light of the sun is so wonderful. It seems that everything it touches turns to gold. To some point, this is true because the sun, when it's reflected on an object, it glows, it shines as if it turned into gold. How I wish I had such power. So he wants the power of the sun. What did the power of the sun, the sun that he commented on? Touching things so they turn into gold. It touches everything into, it touches everything that it looks like as if it turned to gold. Midas returned to his throne room. Throne room is the room where he sits on the king's chair his room or his main room to rule the country. Okay. Fine. So he went to this room, his throne room. He called to a servant to bring him water. He wanted water. Servant is the person who helps him in the palace. And he told them, I'm thirsty, I want water. The servant returned with a bronze cup. Bronze is um, a metal, like the ones we use in sport competitions. You know, if they are the first winner, or if they are the first winner, you get a gold medal. If you are the second winner, you, you get a silver medal. And if you are the third, you get bronze medal. So it's a metal that's cheaper than gold and silver. Okay, so bronze, a uh, metal that is cheaper than gold and silver. It's a good one. It's a. It's a. It's not a cheap one. No, if it's it's cheap if it's compared to gold and silver. As Midas touched it, it turned to gold. So as if, remember what his guest told him? Whenever you decide your dream, it will come true. Whenever you think of your dream, it will come true. And this is what happened. Now Midas thought of turning things into gold in his garden. Fine. And uh, when he thought of this, he got onto the palace and he did not busy his mind whether it came true or no. But actually what this guest said really happened. The, get, the wish came true. So as Midas touched it, it turned to gold. He was dumbfounded until he remembered. The word dumbfounded is an old word, which means he was surprised, he was shocked. He couldn't talk because of shock. Okay. He was shocked 
with what he, what, with what happened until he remembered, ah, my guest told me my, my wish will come true. So he was dumbfounded until he remembered my wish, my wish. Silence has kept his promise. Has kept his promise means he did what he promised me to do. He did what he promised me to do. Okay. Okay. So, now he remembered and he knew why it turned into gold. The bronze cup, why it turned into gold. But I have really the power to turn everything I touch to gold. He was still not sure. Ah, it happened to the cup. But is it going to happen every time? Midas ran round the room, touching the pillars, the tables, the chairs. They all turned instantly to gold. Instantly means at once. Once he touched everything around the room, it turned into gold. It works, it works, he cried. Cried here doesn't mean tears, it means shouted. So he shouted out loud that, wow, it works. It shall be the wealthiest man the world has ever known. I shall be. I shall be the wealthiest man. Wealthiest is the most, the richest. I'll be the richest man in the world. Now everything I touch turns into gold. Who could be richer than me? He danced, he shouted. He ran through his palace, touching everything he could. Now he is the king of gold. Everything he touched turns into gold. Soon the palace was ablaze with golden light. Ablaze means glowing or shining with gold. With the, with, the, with the reflection of the golden reflection of everything because it turned into gold. So, now it, if, if, um, if I stop here and ask you how did he feel, yes, he was very proud of what he did. Everything he, he touched turns into gold and according to his character, as a greedy man, this is very satisfying. He would be very happy, okay? So, at this point, I suppose he is very proud of what he did. So, how rich I am, he shouted in triumph. In triumph, triumph means victory or winning. as if he is a victorious man. Remember, he, he felt lost about what he could wish for. And now turning everything to gold is a kind of dream that really, that uh, such a greedy man would love, of course. So, exhausted, he returned to his throne room and sat down. Exhausted means tired. Why was he tired? Yes, because he kept running around the, the palace. And he was almost acting like crazy, okay? So exhausted, he returned to his throne room and sat down. He lifted the golden cup to his mouth. No water poured onto his parched lips, only a bitter golden powder. Ah, now the bad side is starting to appear. The bad side of the story. Let's read it again. Exhausted, he returned to his throne room and sat down, his main room, and he sat down. He lifted the golden cup. Lifted means carried. He carried the golden cup up to his mouth. No water poured on to his patched lips. Patched is dry. Remember, he still, fe still feels thirsty. So once the water touched his lips, it's no more water. It turned into a bitter. Bitter means bad taste, something with 
with a bad taste. And it's the opposite of sweet. Opposite of sweet. Okay? So, once the water touched his lips, it turned into golden powder. So, remember, this is, it became now a curse. A curse means something bad. You wish for a dream and it happens and it turns into something bad. So, bring me wine. You see, he's still arrogant, he's still greedy. It's okay, if water turns into gold, I can ask for wine, no problem. So, bring me wine, he demanded. Demanded means ordered. Or asked for it. So, bring me wine. Harder, you're the king and we listen to you. This water tastes like mud. Bring me peaches. Peaches, kind of round fruit. Kind of round fruit. A servant returned with wine and a bowl of fruit. So now he wants to, uh, to, to eat wine, to, sorry, to drink wine and eat peaches. King Midas picked up a peach, but as he bit into it, he screamed. Bit into it means started eating it. Once he started eating it, he uh, screamed. Why did he scream? This peach is as hard as a stone. For, for one more time, the writer is using a simile to show the image clear in our mind. So how hard the peach was, it was as hard as stone. He looked at it and it too had turned to gold. Midas was crowing with pride. I'm so rich, he shouted. Crowing was this is a sign of loud voice, like a crow. A crow is the blackbird. So he made the sound of the blackbird with pride. He was proud of himself. Pride here means proud of himself. Oh, he's still stupid. He did not get it that he's in big trouble. How come that everything he's going to touch is going to turn into gold. This means he will not be able to eat or drink. Okay? He's still stupid with what happens. So, dazzled by the light flashing from the golden throne and the pillars all around him, deaf to everything except the sound of his own thoughts, he did not see Philomena coming towards him. So, he was dazzled by the light. Dazzled means confused by the light. He cannot see clearly. Why? Because of the light. Can't see clearly. So he couldn't see clearly because of the light, the glowing, the shining that comes out of the golden throne. Throne is the chair where he sits. So of course, it's not a chair. It's a huge and very luxurious chair, a very rich one for the king and the pillars all around him, deaf to everything. He cannot hear anything. Deaf means can't hear. Can't hear anything except the sound of his own thoughts, his own ideas. And what were his ideas? He just told us that how rich he was at this part. I'm so rich, the line before it. So he did not see phenomena coming towards him. Father, what's all this? Midas bent down to lift her into his arms. She did not understand why is her father so happy, so proud, what's going on? So he bent down to lift her into his, his arms. He went to hug his daughter. He wanted to hug 
his daughter. And because she was still a child, he had to go down, to bend down. Philomena, look, look around you. Is it not wonderful? Everything they touch turns to gold. But Philomena could say nothing. She too had turned to gold. Ah, here the disaster strikes. The problem starts. Midas looked down at Philomena. He touched her face, but her skin was like ice. I want you to notice the use of simile, very important. Her skin was like ice. Remember, the writer described this skin at the very beginning being as soft as velvet. Her hair felt like thorns. Another part. Thorns are the sharp parts of the flower. I'm, I'm sure you studied this in science. The sharp points in a flower. They are the thorns. Okay. So, her smile was an ugly grin. Grin is smile. But not a big smile, a small one. And hers was like that of a doll. You know, uh, the girls know this. When you buy a new doll and it has a, a fake smile on her face, she cannot change it. It's a state, you know. This is an ugly smile, an ugly grin. His tears fell so that they formed golden blisters on his cheek. Of even his tears turned into gold. This is so bad. So, ah, we, I forgot to say this. Blisters are bubbles. This word. Blisters means bubbles. So there were golden bubbles on his skin. Not tears, not the usual tears, because even the tears, when they touched his skin, turned into bubbles of gold. What have I done? Dionysus. Forgive my greed. Remember who is Dionysus? We said that Silenus, the guest of the king, was teacher of the god Dionysus. So the god Dionysus fulfilled the dream of the king because he wants his teacher to be happy. Okay? Now, the king is asking for the forgiveness of who? He wants who to feel happy with him? The god Dionysus. So forgive my greed means forgive my selfishness. As if, I'm sorry, I didn't want to be, or I didn't know that being greedy will cause me these very big problems. Philomena is more precious to me than all this gold could ever be. Uh, now he is back to his right thinking. I want my daughter. I don't want all these golden things. I don't want them. I want my daughter back. So for many days and nights, King Midas lay weeping on the ground. Weeping means crying heavily. So he spent days and nights crying heavily on the ground until his tears formed a golden pool beside him. Seeing his despair, his, his despair means his regret and bad condition. Regret and sadness. Dionysus took pity on him. Took, took pity on him means felt sorry for him. When I, took, when I take pity on you, it means I feel sorry for you. So Dionysus took pity on him means felt sorry for him now the man is is true he's not acting remember at the beginning when he acted no this time he's not acting he's true he wants his daughter to get back and he is regretting his selfishness he feels bad because he was selfish and greedy so he ordered the king to bathe in the river pactolus 
some river to bathe is to go swim there. Go swim there in this river. It's a river in Greece. So he ordered the king to bathe in the river Pactolus. Midas dragged himself to the river. Of course, the word dragged here means pulled himself. And this tells you that he was moving very heavily. It was not his usual condition. Remember when everything turned to gold? He was very happy and jumping and dancing around the palace. But now, because he's very sad, he cannot even walk properly. He dragged himself to the river. The waters took away his terrible gift. And forever after, the sands on the river bed glittered with gold. Bed glittered means had a layer of gold on them. Bed glittered means had a layer of gold. Had a layer of gold. Why? Because he got rid of this bad gift on the beach of this river, River Pactris. It was a nice story. I, 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 I liked it myself. Let's see the final paragraph. Midas walked humbly back to his palace. Humbly is the opposite of arrogant. Opposite of arrogant. Arrogant is full of himself. Now, is he full of himself? No, he's not. He became a humble man. A man like everybody else. He's not showing off. So you can put another word for this. We say not showing off. Not showing off means he's not full of himself. He's a man like any other man. Stopping from time to time to touch a tree or a stone. His touch did not change them. So why was he touching them in the first place? To make sure that his touch is not changing things to gold again. He hated the gift that he had. He didn't want it to work anymore. And it seems like he really lost it because his touch did not change them. As he neared the palace garden, he saw a girl dancing as lightly as a butterfly. See the expression? Another simile, as lightly, as beautifully as a butterfly. He heard a laugh as sweet as the nightingale's song. We remember that we said that the nightingale is a bird with nice voice. So he heard a laugh as sweet as the nightingale's song and saw a smile that warmed away his unhappiness. Warmed away like talked away or replaced his unhappiness made, made everything warm and nice again. It's like replaced his unhappiness. It was phenomena. Now, why is this ending to tell you that everything was back to how it was before the king um, before the king uh, he had this ability to change everything to gold. Now he lost it and everything goes back to life and happiness again. And the lesson you get from this myth is it's not about gold anymore. You can enjoy life in different small stuff, other stuff, starting with the people around you. This is very important. Now in this myth, this kind of myth is not the one that's with a hero or with a monster. Why is that? Because, um, I'm sorry, let me, let me say this first of all, yes. So, uh, this one is not the usual one. This is another kind of myth in which we learn a lesson at the end and it teaches people something, okay? But the kind of myth that you're supposed to be answering in the exam is the one with the monster and the hero and everything related to the myth features. This one we are going to delay for now. Let's take the easy type of myth and later on 
we will finish the, the other one at school, inshallah, ya Rabbi, when you're all back. Because the other one is full of details and descriptions. We can take part of it, but the whole thing and writing it will be at school when you're back, inshallah, ya Rabbi, soon, inshallah. Okay? So for now, we take this easy kind of myth, which is about understanding the world and teaching man lessons. The Greek people wanted to teach themselves lessons. Now, we are going to answer the homework. Remember that the homework was the questions about Midas and the Golden Wish. I'm going to write the answers for every question, and if there is anything that needs explanation, I'm going to do. So explain how the author, look at the first paragraph, explain how the author makes phenomena seems special. In this question, you need to refer to the use of language. So the middle answer will be, it says, it here means the text or the writer. To be fair, the writer. The writer said she was the king's youngest child and the loveliest and that when okay. and that when she smiled everyone became happy he described her as if she is the prettiest in the world. Okay? Okay. Am I supposed to write all this long answer? No. I'm writing all the details to make you sure of your answer. But if you covered the same meaning in fewer number of words or in a shorter sentence, no problem at all. Okay? So, he makes her, he also... He also makes her seem special okay, by describing, by using simile sorry, by using simile. Remember we highlighted this while we're working, that the use of similes is to highlight how beautiful the lady was. Again, is my answer supposed to be that long? No. I'm writing a detailed answer, a one that contains all the points. But if you covered the same meaning in less number of words, it is accepted in the exam. Okay, number two. How do you know that Midas treats Silenus as an important visitor? I write the, the two most important pieces of evidence that you should be using. He said he was honored by the visit he said he was honored by the visit okay and number two he got his servants to look after him he got his servants to look after him he got his servants to look after the guests. Okay? These were very clear evidences, pieces of evidence about how, care, how careful he was to, to make his visitor happy. Okay, now we complete the thought bubble to show what Midas is thinking when he puts off telling silence his wish. When he puts off, means he delays, he postpones, delays, or postpones, or makes it later. He did not say it at once. Okay? So, 
if you were in his place, what would he say? Okay. One of the examples and the good ones that I really liked was, I don't want to look greedy, but really, I want everything. He did not say at once what he wants, but he said, okay, I don't want to look like a bad man, but actually I need or I want everything. Okay, we get to the next question. What gives Midas the idea of turning everything to gold? Remember this part when he was laying under a tree and he looked at the sun, so the answer will be by looking at the sun. Okay. When does Midas realize that his wish for gold was a mistake? Again, a very short answer. When he touched his daughter, then he realized that she changed into gold and this is not what he wanted. He wanted things to be gold, but not people, especially his daughter. So, when Midas is weeping on the ground, what is he thinking? This is not page 9, it's page 9 in the original text, but in yours it will be page 3. So this one will be page 3, okay? So, what will, be his, what will he say? One of the best answers is... I have been so greedy, I can't eat and the worst thing is my daughter. who turned into gold. This could be one of the sentences. If you wrote a sentence with the same meaning, it is accepted. If you include the same meaning in your own sentence, in your own way, it's still accepted. Okay. Why is the river so important in the story? Because it took the terrible gift away. Because it took the terrible gift away. Okay? It appeared only at the end of the story, only to be a solution for the king who lost every Okay, so at the end of the story, why does Midas stop from time to time to touch a tree or, or a stone? We said this to see if his powers are still working. You can, instead of saying to see if his powers are still working, you can say to check on his powers if they are still working. The verb check in is a good one to check on, I'm sorry. Okay, number nine. What did Midas learn in this story? Again, one of the good answers is he learned he learned not to be greedy 
as it says he means the text now minus new what really mattered to to him especially his daughter he understood what really mattered to him what really important what was really important to him which is his uh, okay which is his daughter Okay. <clears throat> Number ten. Okay. The answers will go this way. Number 11. My listen, the golden wish is a myth. Which of these features of a myth, of myth and traditional tales? Traditional tales are old tales. In the old tales and the myth, a wish is granted. In all kinds of myth, it's always a wish that's granted. And there are different versions. What does it, what does it mean here? It means it was told in different ways. And this is right, the story is told in different ways by different nations. Nations are people, people around the world. And this is true about King Midas. It's a story that was told in many different ways. The Greeks started the one that we said today, but there were other people who changed it. And this is called the features. Let's remember the word features, the special techniques or elements or tips that you include in a certain kind of writing. Okay, this is very good. So, you, the features of your writing is the special things you're going to use in your writing, the special techniques or special clues that you're supposed to be putting in your writing. Okay. What will be next? What will be next is the giant panda bear, panda bear, which is an oncological report. Very easy, I'm sure. It won't take you long to do. So this is your homework for next time, which you're going to explain fully and answer the questions together. So the next time we're going to be working on the second text on page eight called the giant panda. I hope everything was clear for you and I see you next time, guys. Bye.